I was contacted by Sandy from Germany. Hi, Sandy, <laughs> on Instagram, asking if I would like to create a page for her nautical junk journal. If you would like to join me in tackling that, please keep on watching. This is Barbara from Vienna, Austria. I was instantly intrigued because I've never thought about creating anything nautical themed. So first I checked Sandy's Instagram feed to see if she had posted any other pages from her junk journal so I could get a better idea of what she was actually looking for. And she had quite a few there and they were so much fun. There were also pages from other guest artists, which I think is such a good idea. So how do you go about tackling such a request? I first went through all of my treasures at home to see what I might have that would fit this theme and found more than I thought I had. <laughs> so let me show you some of the things that I found at home. So I had these, which were some, I guess you could call them die cuts from a local shop here called The Flying Tiger that I had bought more than a year ago, I believe. I don't even know why I bought this because I really never had plans to do anything nautical related, but I thought these shells were really cute and there's a couple of fish in there too. I just really like this vintage style. Then I also found this little charm that came maybe with a traveler's notebook or something like a fake one i thought this might fit to the theme and then i went through my books so i have a few like children's visual encyclopedias like this one and a lot of them have beautiful like ship images really really cool stuff here etc et then I have this children's it just says um, children's world from A to Z and I actually had this book as a child but we had like, gotten rid of it and then I found another copy in uh, my flea market so I had I just had to buy this <laughs> so here you also see there's some ship images really cute then I have this book, which is also a children's picture encyclopedia. And look at these beautiful shells. I just love them. And they also have, I believe, fish. And yeah, so there's these pictures. Look at these whales, my goodness. All these fish here. Such cute pictures. And then I have another book. What is this one? Yeah, The World of Animals. And this has so many fish pages. Like I can't even look at this. Like this is all fish. So I think I definitely have enough fish. <laughs> and then I also have this beautiful wrapping paper book. This is again from the company Pepin. I have a few of these. I find these locally at a store and I think this was probably reduced because I don't think I got this for the full price. And I thought, well, maybe Japanese patterns might have something like fish related and i was right i found a couple in here so there is this one and there's also this one here and i think yeah and there's another one so there's this typical japanese koi fish here as well and because that wasn't enough i decided 
to check Pixabay. I will link that site for you below for free images and found a few that I really liked, like the ones you see here. And at that point, I was actually completely overwhelmed. <laughs> I didn't just want to make a random collage with nautical themed elements all over the page. So I felt I was stuck and I was actually stuck for a few days not knowing how to continue. And I'm telling you this because on video it always looks like I kind of know what I'm doing and I have so many different ideas and it all looks so easy and quick. But I'm telling you this is not the case. I really want to keep it real and let you know that I struggle as well and there are a lot of thoughts and preparations going into each videos which of course you never see with this video i want to let you know that i struggle as well even having done this many years now i struggle <laughs> and i don't always have the ideas right away and sometimes things just need to sit with me and sometimes like with this project i really feel overwhelmed and i just have to kind of let it go and wait till the idea comes to me but not quitting because if i quit I lost so I don't give up but I, I don't at the same time I don't want to stress myself to come up with the perfect idea so I kind of just let it be in the back of my mind and to accompany me for a few days and usually some sort of idea will come to me in the most unexpected time like it did this time so I was doing my fitness routine at home yesterday and in the middle of it and I, I was kind of thinking about this again while <laughs> doing my routine and I finally had like a kind of an idea where I thought okay this could go somewhere I still don't know exactly how it's gonna be but at least I had a starting point so I knew what I wanted to look for and it was an image I had in my mind that I was hoping to find on Pixabay and I found something like I wanted, which turned out to be this image. So I'll link this image for you specifically as well. So these are free from Pixabay. So what I was looking for was a vintage image of some ladies on the beach. And I wasn't looking for like sexy bikini pictures or anything. <laughs> I wanted like, you know, the typical vintage fashion on the beach and i wanted them to actually be standing on the beach because my idea was to have some sort of a background maybe one of these wrapping papers maybe this one i'm not sure and then to have these as the focal point and then maybe we have some shells around them and maybe we have a ship in the background i don't know i want it to be like kind of surrealistic and bizarre but at the same time, not. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> so let's see what we can do with this. Sandy did tell me it needs to be an A5 paper. So that's the half of a regular A4 paper. So that's like the half of this. And she would like the corners to be rounded. So that is easily done. I just have to decide what my background paper will be. <laughs> I think I'm just going to try it with this. The good thing is if I mess it up, I don't have to send it. I can make an another one. <laughs> so actually, I have nothing to worry about. Nothing can go wrong. So let's just do this and see what happens. So I'll start by tearing this out. So I'm just going to measure what an A5 is and cut that out. So I have my A5 paper, so now I'll round my corners. And then I will ink this up. Sometimes I think the hardest thing is to just start. I think once you're in it, then somehow things will just develop like the project takes a life on its own which I think is always so much fun like if you don't know where it's going and you just kind of listen to what your project is telling you what to do next without having it all planned out first that's 
like one of my favorite things about junk journaling. Okay, we have a start, yay. <laughs> so then I know I want to use these ladies. I think I want to fussy cut them without this background. I do want to keep the ocean and the sand, but I don't want this white background. So I will fussy cut around this. I just remembered I actually got this image off Pinterest and not Pixabay. Nevertheless, I will link this for you. And seeing this now, I probably will actually fussy cut them out completely and get rid of the beach and the ocean as well, but I'm not ready to make that decision yet. Okay, so we have a background and we have our focal element. Yay! <laughs> so let's see. Hmm, let me get my shells. So I want it to place... Wow, these are huge actually now seeing this. Most of these are huge. <laughs> well, I did want it to be a bit surreal, didn't I? And we have the fish. I might be able to incorporate those. They're so cute. So I thought I would kind of just fill this whole bottom part where normally the beach would be with shells. <laughs> I don't know if I like this. Add another small one here. Okay, then we have fish. We could have them like one coming here and one here. Yeah, I think I need to cut these out. I think it's weird unless I would extend the ocean with like some watercolor or something. No. I'm just gonna cut them out completely. Okay, I fussy cut them. I've also lightly inked around them just to get rid of the white edges. Th this just kind of makes me feel like I'm more free to do what I want with them. But now putting them on here, they kind of disappear into the background. <laughs> so I think this background is just way too loud. So I think I'm going to go over it with some gesso just to mute it down, but hopefully we will still see the fish in the background. Okay, I have this cheap white gesso from, oops, from Action. Just put it straight on here without using a palette. I did shake it up a little bit. This one is quite thin anyway, so I guess there's no worry about seeing the pattern through it. Yeah, I think that's much better. Might actually add just a little bit more. I will let that dry. I ended up going over this even a third time and you can see that you can still see the fish very well. So this is really a very, very thin gesso. <laughs> so I'm really liking this now. This is so much better now. They really stand out. What I'm not liking is the seashells <laughs> because they are just so dark that they're going to dominate the whole collage here, which I don't want. So, I mean, I might still use the fish, but the, the other shells, I think, are just too much. So instead, I still want the idea with the shells. So I think I'm going to use these, but I won't use the originals because, first of all, I want to preserve the originals. And second of all, they are huge. So I just made copies of them I mean, actually, I took a photo and then just printed out a lot smaller. So this is much easier to work with now. So I will fussy cut some of these and I think these colors will work better with what we have going on here. I have fussy cut them all and even inked up all of the edges already. Some of them are huge. Some of them are tiny. <laughs> so we'll see how we can somehow arrange them. 
to work I love this a lot. I'm gonna hate myself for doing this once I start gluing this down. <laughs> that's gonna, oops, it's gonna be a nightmare to glue. No idea how I'm gonna do this, but I love it. The colors are really working together beautifully. And that's what I mean by the project will tell you what it needs. Like I had these before and, and if you compare it, these just work so much better. So I saw that this just wasn't working. So the project was telling me, no, you need lighter colors. So this is awesome. Wow, I, w I wish I could just magically say glue. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. I'm just gonna start gluing. I'm gonna use my art glitter glue. This time I'm using the real thing, not my tacky glue in an art glitter glue bottle because this is delicate and I know this is going to work the best. And I'm definitely going to do my top down gluing method for this. So I'll let you watch the beginning of it so that you maybe get a feeling for this method in case you don't know it yet. So I will try to zoom you in a little bit and just so you get an idea because obviously you could take a photo but this is so intricate. If I would take all these layers off and start gluing from the bottom, I think I'm going to go crazy. So I'll show you my top down gluing method again. So the pieces really need to be, they really need to be where they're supposed to be. And then you just start gluing with those pieces that are the most on top. Like for example, this one. The tricky thing is not to glue in the middle here because otherwise you will have glued it down to the background and then you can't lift it anymore. <laughs> So you can really just go around the edges and now I don't remember how I had it <laughs> and I think I did put a lot of glue where it shouldn't be but I'm just gonna go with it now because otherwise this is really gonna drive me insane. So now these are starting to hold together just by the few pieces that I have stuck down. That's helping a lot. So now I can continue here on this side. And now it's getting easier because now the pieces aren't really moving around anymore. So now I can just easily glue everything that's not glued down yet. And now I can turn around the whole thing if I didn't glue it down. I did in some places apparently. Okay, now I have the whole thing glued together and I can just turn it around, glue those parts that I haven't glued yet, and then just glue down the whole thing. This is just so much easier. I really do think the art glitter glue with this metal tip is the best glue for collaging, especially for intricate pieces. I love working with this glue. It is a bit pricier than your all-purpose glues or tacky glues, but it is, in my opinion, it is worth it. I'll have one of these bottles linked for you below in case you don't know where to find it. Okay, I like it. So now I need to cut off all of the excess.
so what happened there i guess the glue smeared some of the distress oxide but i think that will be covered anyway so now i'm just going to re-ink those edges i think i'm going to re-ink the whole thing because through the gesso these sides kind of the the inking kind of disappeared now i have a few small ones left that I think I still want to place on the collage as well. Why waste them? The more details, the more there is to discover on this collage. Okay. I like this little shell cluster here. <laughs> okay, let's put these two ladies back. No, I'm not sure about my fish anymore. Well, I mean, he's still quite cool, actually. I like how the blue coordinates with the blue of her swimming costume. I'm not sure about this guy here. I still wanted a ship or something in the background. I went through my books again, and as much as I love those ship photos, the style is not working with this style for me. So I again hopped on Pixabay, and I found this one photo here, which I thought might work in the style. So I printed this out in a size that I think might work for me here. So I'm going to fussy cut this and then we'll see what it looks like if we put this in the background. I've inked around it as well. Now I really wish I wouldn't have glued down my shells yet because I would have liked this to go underneath. But what we can still do is cut around where the shells are, if that's what I want to do. So that would come in like this. Yeah, I think I would definitely cut around where the shells are, although that will be hard to see where they actually are. <laughs> I wish I would have planned this better. Oh well, it is what it is. And then where do we want these? Don't have to be in the middle, actually. Why? Why am I always putting them in the middle? I don't know. Or we have it like way in the background. Yeah, I think I kind of like this actually, just like that. We'll definitely need a quote. I'm not sure about these fish. I think I will not have the fish. Yeah, I will not do the fish. And it, yeah, needs a quote. This is a bit too white for me, so I'm going to take my tea dye and just go over that with this brush. I have these kind of brushes linked below for you as well, in case you cannot find them anywhere locally. They are super for this kind of inking up, not the edges, but surfaces. Because I, f I find if you d do that with these, you'll get these smears rather than a nice blended surface. I could color in the water in blue, but I don't think I will. I think that kind of will disrupt the collage if I do that. For the quote, I have found something on Pinterest, which I believe is perfect. And I printed it out twice. I think this word is good in, in this size, but I think the smaller font might be better in this side. We'll, size. We'll see. It's perfect because it's a German word and it's defined in English. And Sandy is in Germany, speaks German. So this is perfect. So Fernweh is a noun and it's the feeling of longing for far off places you've never even been to. And I think in the situation we're all in now where we cannot really travel, this is perfect. I know I have Fernweh. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you do. So this is the perfect quote. Or definition, I should say. And I will also leave this page that I printed out with both sizes for you as well as a freebie, of course. So I'm going to cut this apart. Kind of want this to go like on the boat or on the ship, I should say. I'm wondering if I should cut out. No, I think I will leave it like this. I will, of course, ink it up. And then let's see if the definition needs to be bigger. No, actually, I think the size is fine. 
Where do we put it? Maybe down here. Actually, I think I will cut this out. <laughs> so I'll do that and then ink it up and then I'll glue everything down and then I'll show you. And I think there'll be some final touches I need to add. So here we are, everything is glued down and I must say, I am loving this. So happy with this so far. I do want these two ladies to stand out a bit more. So I will go around them with a charcoal pencil. This is a soft one. You can also do this with a black colored pencil. So I'll just go around them. And now I will go around it with my water brush. Obviously you can do this with a regular paintbrush as well. So this kind of just blends it out a little better. I have water dripping everywhere. There's a bit too much here for my liking. And it's not blending very well, of course, because, well, here on the gesso, right there, it's blending beautifully. But of course not on the other pieces. This is way too dark here. <laughs> but I'm gonna have to leave it or go over it with gesso. Yep, there's too much here. <laughs> Thankfully, it's on the gesso where I can just really blend it out well. Okay, that didn't go quite as planned, but it will do. <laughs> as a final touch, I want to add a few turquoise splatters and i definitely don't want any in their faces so i will cover those these are from uh, white knights artist grade watercolors they are very highly pigmented they are just gorgeous so i have to be careful i will try to be very gentle I should also cover up the quote, otherwise we can't read it. Don't know if I should add any up there, maybe just a few. Okay, that's it. I will let this dry and show you the final result. Now that they are dry, the spots almost look black. I mean, some of them look more turquoise, but some of them actually look black, which is interesting, but that's okay. And I feel now that we need a darker border. So I'm using my Memento Truffle Espresso, uh, Espresso Truffle <laughs> Memento ink, which looks almost like black. And I'm going to just directly go over the edge. So we'll still see the brown, the vintage photo, but we'll also see the dark edge. It's, it's, it's actually a very nice combination using like a dark, very defined edge, but also having the distress ink or distress oxide that is kind of fanned out more towards the inside. Yeah, I think that added a little something. And I usually don't do this, but this since this is going into someone else's journal, I will add the date and the and my name somewhere so that Sandy knows that this is from me since she has several in her journal from other people as well. It is very small, so I don't think it distracts from the collage. I'm going to call this done. I hope Sandy will like it. Thanks. In the meantime, Sandy has received my collage and here I'm back on her Instagram feed and you can see my collage here. And let's 
just click on that. So Sandy always likes doing a counter page to the one that she received. So mine is obviously the one on the right and she's added a fabric tab and this charm that I gave her and her collage is the one on the left and look how gorgeous that is. And I fin think they fit together so beautifully. She's done such an awesome job. I just love this double spread. Thank, thank you so much for inviting me to contribute to your nautical journal. I had a lot of fun making this. Definitely, it took me out of my comfort zone. So I always appreciate that. And these fish and shells that I didn't use, I will send these to Sandy with this collage and also this. Maybe she can add this to her journal somehow. Maybe you want to try a nautical collage. <laughs> so check out the freebies below and uh, have fun with it. Thank you for hanging out with me. Love you guys. Mwah. Mwah.